and thanks for coming back to the Geek Authorities Opinions, Reviews, and Commentary. I'm Lorenzo Marchese. Everything you hear here is from me and only me, so I'm not speaking for anybody else. Um, in this uh, episode, I just wanted to quickly uh, go over Discovery Season 2. Now, as you know, Discovery Season 1 was a disappointment for me because they called it Trek and it was far from Trek for me. A lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the critics also agreed. It was heavy in special effects, blah, blah, blah. Um, not story-driven or character-driven. Well, come to Discovery Season 2, guess what? Oh my god. They developed characters, they had a little more interesting story plot, and I think the main reason is because they uh, brought Anson in to play uh, Captain Christopher Pike, and his character was far more dynamic than a lot of the other, you know, sub-characters that were out there, and the interaction with Sequoia, um, uh, and as well as, uh, um, you know, the rest of the regulars on the show was just so much more dynamic. Um, they focused on a character or two in a story, as opposed to let's get everyone on screen and have lens flares and all that other stuff. Um, I just wanted to share with you real quick uh, that I wasn't alone in my opinion. And if you look at this, this is um, Rotten Tomatoes. And as you can see, season two got a higher, high, much higher rating um, from the critics and a much lower rating from the fans. I don't know why. For some reason, the diehard fans just kind of dig non-story, no character-driven kind of things. I don't know. I, I can't explain it. But as you can see, um, I think the last year's critics rating was around 50-something, 58-ish, 9 ish 60. I don't know. But it definitely went up for season two, and I totally agree because, again, um, it wasn't about how many lens flares were in every frame. It was about, you know, the characters and story. So one of the things um, that I think is the, is the problem in doing a little bit of research, and I have heard as of this recording um, that the sets have been torn down. Season three was shot. Um, sets have been torn down. Apparently, they're in a blind panic to edit what they have because they can't do reshoots because apparently some of the episodes didn't cut well together, or the story was a little gaping or whatever. And I have heard officially that there's probably not gonna be a season four, um, unless when they air season three, all the ratings go up and you know, whatever. Uh, but uh, CBS has have been having a whole time, whole horrible time with the uh, Star Trek franchise um, in, uh, in general. Lower Decks uh, just premiered um, uh, a few weeks ago and Horrible reviews, horrible reviews. I only saw one episode. And I gotta say, I kinda like the style of the animation, but again, the stories are, it, it's kind of a, I think they wanna be a Big Bang, Big Bang Theory meets Family Guy, but it, it's just not working um, story-wise. And the, some, one, one or two of the characters are interesting, but not, not enough to drive the, the cartoon. So I don't know if they're trying to be a kid's show or uh, you know, Adult Swim kind of show. I mean, there's a little, you know, kind of suggestiveness and uh, s slight profanity in it, but it, it's just not. It, it, again, it's it's. I don't know. Are people reading their scripts over at CBS? But they're just pumping them out um, just to hopefully make money, and they're not. And as a result, uh, CBS has lost money on the show, uh, both Discovery and I hear Picard. So I'm hoping Picard comes back because that, as you know, I did another commentary. That was a great show. But I want to, I want you to kind of look at the reason why I think, my personal opinion, why this is so. Check this out. I just kind of, for the heck of it, went to IMDb and popped this up. And as you can see on the very top, it says series produced by. Now it looks like, yeah, there are more names <laughs> below. I mean, seriously, you've got I don't know, you know, one, two, three, ten. 20, 30, you know, 40, 40 plus people producing this show called Discovery. And it's like, you know, the old you know, phrase, you're going to screw up the sauce if you've got too many, you know, chefs in the kitchen. Um, and granted, not ever, all of those people work on every show, but over the course of, 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 of two seasons, do you really need 40 producers? And, and for those of you who don't know, producers tend to guide the show's direction. That means story concepts, uh, approving scripts, um, hiring directors, you know, casting the thing. So there's, there's a lot of responsibility put on producers. But, you know, when you've got 40 people, I mean, how can you not have a mess? 
because you know they're not all going to agree. Ultimately, the executive producers have final say on you know, any kind of disputes, I would imagine. But the, uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, it's just, it's too much. Um, second season was better. I believe two or three of the producers that were in the first seasons were let go um, for hopefully obvious reasons. Um, and as a result, uh, you've got a little more meatier story that definitely more characters. Um, you know, and the actors had a lot more to do. So season two was, was good. Like I said, what I've heard about season three, it's probably worse than season one. Um, I'll keep my fingers crossed, but like I said, it's just not worth, uh, worth to me, it doesn't make sense to pay for it because that's the only way you can see it. You know? And again, I'll reiterate, CBS Access is the one who at Comic-Con gave you like 20 minutes of three great panels. And I say great because I didn't see them. I'm not going to pay for them. But you couldn't see the entire panel of that hour, of the three that were in that hour, unless you paid for the Access and you can go see it. It's like, you know what, dudes, forget about the money. And the fans will come if the product is there and it's worthy of, of making the effort and you'll make your money um, in many ways, but just trying to suck it out of us the moment you produce something is, is absolutely crazy. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is I want to talk a little bit about, um, okay, let's see, uh, where is it? It is right here. Okay. Uh, overall, this is I, uh, yeah, IMDb again. Um, some of these episodes were pretty amazing in terms of the characterizations. There were cute little scenes and like all of them, um, great story arcs. Uh, brother was a great one. Um, we, we learn uh, Silru has a brother, uh, New Eden. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, interesting stories. Point of Light, um, uh, I don't know how to say that. An old boy for Sharon, I don't know what that is. Um, I gotta say, uh, Mary uh, Wiseman is has a really incredible arc, and she's a really good actor. Uh, she's playing kind of the ditzy, super intelligent in terms of her what her job is, uh, insecure. It just uh, she's amazing to watch. I mean, and they gave her a lot to do second season, and you really enjoy her performance. And uh, I, I give nods to her uh, her amazing. Uh, attempt at keeping it funny and keeping her, you know, the, the, the characters uh, trying to do her job as best as she can. And you can tell she really is. Uh, she's just got a few character flaws that make it uh, quite enjoyable to watch. So um, other things, blah, 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 Spock and, uh, oh yeah, introduction of Spock um, as a main character. It came like second half of the season, but it's great to see the actor did a really good job. Um, there she is again, Mary Wiseman. Uh, and of course, the uh, two-part, they call it a two-part close of the season finale, uh, where you get to see the Enterprise, the NCC-1701, um, with Christopher Pike commanding, and number one, they brought number one, which was Major Barrett's character in the original pilot, which never got aired because uh, the NBC execs thought it was too intellectual. Mm -hmm. It was too smart for audiences. They wouldn't understand it. Uh, you know, flash forward 60 years later and the network still don't know what they're doing. They, they think they, they've got the handle on the, the audience grasp, but the bottom line is if it ain't on a page, it ain't on the stage. And that's an old theater term that applies to every medium of, of entertainment in terms of uh, on camera or talent or vocal or whatever. It's just, it's just if it ain't there, it's just not gonna happen uh, on the page. So yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the series uh, finale, much more, the last two episodes, much more than anything uh, of season two. So um, yes, I believe season two was worth watching and I would recommend watching it. You can forget the, the first season. Did I say first season? Second season is worth watching. The first season is, you know, you can skip it if you'd like. Um, not a lot of backstory to go into the second season that you need. You can, you can enjoy season two without having seen season one, um, I think. But then, what do I know? Um, the other thing I want to show you is some of the uh, imagery that uh, I caught. Um, this is the season two box uh, for the uh, Blu-ray or the DVD that you get. So if you want to look for it, that's the one to get, uh, not the first season. Um, this is a very funny scene. There's a very funny blooper on the Blu-ray, uh, I'm sure the DVD as well, where uh, this character here, I forget his name, he has a cold or, or getting, a, um, getting sick, the beginnings of it, when you have the sniffles and all that. And he sneezes. Well, in the outtake, um, his teeth come out. 
because he's got a set of prosthetic teeth because he's an alien. Um, that's kind of funny. Uh, anyway, you got to see it. Um, these two are an amazing performers, and I wish I could remember her name, but she plays the Admiral. She's got a nice arc in this one, and those two have great chemistry together. He's a great captain uh, as, far as, uh, as far as who they uh, picked. Oh, yes, this is the, uh, their version of what would be, what will be Captain Kirk's bridge uh, in terms of uh, how it looks. And it's quite a bit different, but, you know, you got to consider back in the 60s, you know, they had cardboard and plaster and, and uh, candy for light uh, switches, or, you know, switches, you remember those. Uh, we have to deal with, uh, not have to, but you have to understand that we have a technology that's a little bit better, touch screens, all that other stuff. So they kind of mix the old with the new. I can say I kind of like it. I don't know if I like the the half dish bowl consoles. It, I don't know, it kind of looks like they're DJs or organ players or I don't know. You, you, it's kind of funny, as opposed to what you're familiar with on the original series. And, and again, you got to take in time, take in uh, account the time of the 60s versus the uh, 20, what are we, 2020s now. So, you know, 60 years apart. Yeah, um, I, it doesn't bother me that much, but it, it kind of makes me laugh, chuckle. Because like I said, it looks like they're either playing organs or they're, you know, uh, salad bars or sushi stations. I don't know, but it's kind of funny to me. Um, this guy's amazing. Um, he did, uh, in fact, let me, um, no, that's fine. Um, great costuming when he when we finally see him in the last shot of the of the series of uh, Discovery season two, um, that's what he looks like. He does the whole series with this beard and mustache, and it's great performance with that. But when he comes out on the bridge, he's I think he's trying to go for that Leonard Nimoy, you know, esque kind of uh, stoicness, um, and very you know very firm and his, his delivery and all that. So I applaud him for the uh, attempt and uh, you know, the nod to, you know, he, obviously he's playing, Zachary Quinto had the same thing, you know, have the, the, to don the Spock character. And he had to work with the actual Spock, Leonard Nimoy, in uh, the first 2009 J.J. Abrams film. So that was fun. Um, there she is, Mary. She's an incredible actress uh, in terms of the second season. They gave her a lot more to do. She's versatile, she's funny. She has some serious moments. She's emotionally distraught. You know, she's not somebody, you know, you would, at first impression, you would, you know, put in charge of something, whatever, but she's so smart in her character and she builds confidence and, and, and Sequoia's character, uh, Michael Burnham actually helps her, uh, helps her personally. Uh, uh, this character is an engineer they found on a space station and it's one of my, uh, favorite actresses. Um, actually, she started as a comedian. Um, she's a, a lesbian performer. And I only say that because they're giving, they're, they're allowing in season two the expression of it being natural. So uh, the LGBTQ plus community is, is, you know, being treated as, oh, this is just normal everyday thing. They're not, they're not highlighting it. They're not making, you know, dialogue to say blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's really cool that, that, you know, they're not only having characters in the LGBTQT plus community, uh, but they're they're hiring actual LGBTQT actors, which you know is used to be like, oh, you know, let's do the stereotypical. But anyway, really applaud um, the uh, casting part of this and uh, tag tick something like that is her first name. I really wish I could remember these names. Um, there's uh, most of the cast for season two. Again, there's Spock down there at the bottom uh, with the beard and mustache pretty much through the entire series. Oh, yeah, actually all through the entire series until the last scene of the final episode. Um, and then, of course, there's uh, Sequoia up there and uh, uh, the doctor. Uh, who am I missing? That's number one. It's uh, Christopher Pike's. Uh, oh, Michelle Yeoh is up there. She's back, but she's the alternate, and she's got a little more sting to her. She's, I can tell she's having fun this season be, simply because she's kind of has information, and she's hired by, you know, Section 33, and, and, and it, it's kind of a nice little mix. So you can tell she's kind of like snarky, and, and I know things that you don't kind of thing, and, and uh, uh, Anson. Uh, Captain Pike is uh, really good with playing scenes with her. Of course, Mary on the bottom, and there's uh, Doug Jones as Saru, who has a really cool episode with his sister. And they kind of get reunited later in the, uh, in the in the season. And it's really cool how they developed, you know, his 
a little more of his history and his species and, and so on and so forth. And he's a really good actor. I mean, considering he's under, you know, 18 pounds of makeup just on his head, um, he's a very emotional performer. You can see it in his eyes and his delivery. He's very sincere about it. So um, love to interview him someday. Um, but anyway, um, loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nice little uh, final scene. Uh, everybody's kind of getting their commission toward the end of the series. There's a big thing that happens that I won't you know, give it away, but of course it's resolved. You know, Got to have re resolution of some sort. And it kind of ended, I kind of got the impression that they weren't sure if there was a season three at that point when they were shooting, um, because they could have, they could have left it more open, you know, like, ooh, more to come. It's kind of like, okay, this is where we're going. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, they launched the series 100 years into the future. Um, I believe is how it works. So all the stuff in season one is, you know, pretty much write it off, where season two is kind of built up to where Michael Burnham and crew of Discovery have to go. Not have to, but they make the choice to go into the future um, 100 years to help reset the timeline. And, and I, my head hurts every time I think about when they, when they do things with the timeline. So, okay, I hope this was uh, informative and entertaining and, and uh, things you didn't know. Um, Discovery season two, much better than season one. Um, great performances, a uh, couple episodes with really good, well-written scenes. Um, overall, it's, it's more Trek than season one, um, closer to what Picard is, which is actual Trek, and it feels like Trek. Um, this, this season two actually felt more like Trek uh, to me, so I was impressed with that. So uh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to season three because of all the rumors and stuff that have been going around, but um, I'll give it a chance and uh, let you know what I think. Um, let me know what you think. Put your comments below. Uh, hopefully you like uh, the Geek Authority's opinion, reviews, and commentary, and uh, you'll subscribe, wherever that button is. I don't know where that button is. Check out my other shows. I have uh, the Unboxing the Geek Authority, where I unbox things for the first time, and I see them, and you see them, and we kind of... I get excited. Hopefully you get excited. I also have uh, the Geek Authority's Mysterious Chamber of Collectibles, where I literally look in my pillowcase, uh-huh, got you there, and see what I've collected over the years and show you uh, some memorabilia. So um, hopefully you'll watch that too. Thanks again for watching. Comments and questions below. Be happy to answer. And of course, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.